that happens as you entered just now in the 13th lesson on His Spirit in us. Right. And that's, um, it's not almost, that's the only way. That's the only way. To achieve every, everything that we've been talking about on the journey, exits to avoid, the fogs to clarify, and to know that you're at the, now at the right place. We have a spirit in us, we're sacrificial, we're transcending justice, you know, but it all happens really right. with this last one, the spirit right. in us. And, and what exactly, uh, we've heard it um, um, so many times, we assume everyone uh, understands what it means, but to walk in the spirit, what is that in your own terms? Let's start with Jody. Well, I, I guess, you know, and, and similar to that, I think of one of the verses you're referring to with walk in the spirit shortly after that, it's talking about being led by the spirits. And I think it's a, the same thing, it's, it's that willingness to follow. And, and, you know, it's just our human nature that we want to be in control. We want to get up in the morning, we, we've got our own agendas, we've got our own plans, and man, this, this other thing happened and I don't want to deal with that right now. You know, it's, it's, we, get, we get really irritated when, you know, we've got our agenda, we've got our plan, and, and these other things come up. But if, if, if we will instead say, you know, Father, I want to do your agenda, your plan, and, and it doesn't mean that we don't make plans, we don't make our agendas, but when things come up, that, that we give priority to, to, to the things that God brings to us, and we see them as things that God brings into our lives, and we're able to, 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 to be flexible in that and to say, you know, if, if, if somebody comes in and, you know, they said, hey, uh, you know, my car just broke down. Will you help me or something? And say, no, well, I'm praying. Come yeah. on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Be warm and filled. <laughs> right. That, that you're willing to, to, to set aside your agenda and accept that this, this is part of God's agenda. And, and that, 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 you know, and that's, that's something that we all struggle with, the thing of, of, that, of the, comp the competition between our own agendas and God's agenda. I, I love that you use this metaphor return to this metaphor of walking in the spirit. You know, why, why did Paul say walking? This goes back to this journey. And so much about the Bible, that metaphor just keeps coming up. Um, Abraham, Israel's wandering the world. This uh, discipleship that follows. Um, walking in the spirit ties right into this struggle that, that um, between our agenda and God's agenda. Paul will call it uh, in the text you were just referring to in Galatians 5, walking in the spirit right after he says there's this struggle going on in us between the flesh and the spirit. And here's the flesh, boy, here's the list. Uh, and then here's the spirit. Um, in Romans, love, in joy, seven and eight. yeah, but love, yeah. joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, yeah. meekness, self-control. Uh, let's focus on those things, walk in that. And I like, be, you know, not just walk in that, be led by it. Mm -hmm. It's not like it's walking aimlessly, but we're being led by the Spirit in a particular direction. And those are benchmarks. We can look at love and joy and peace. We can, we can measure those things in our, in our lives, in our attitudes, and in our actions. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's part of the answer to your question is going back to this, this um, journey, this metaphor of the journey, and realize that we're not talking about a sprint here. Mm -hmm. um, we're not talking about just simple point A to point B in a 100-yard dash. We're talking about a lifelong cross-country journey, and mm -hmm. there's walking and pausing and taking, catching our breath and jogging, mm -hmm. and there's, there's a, an experience that we're on. And what's interesting about these lessons is our focus has been on Jesus. Uh, our focus is on Jesus through these four quarterlies. And we've seen the focus on Jesus as Savior, Jesus as Lord. What's interesting is how the Holy Spirit keeps popping up. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit keeps popping up. And, and the beauty of the Spirit is that when we're focusing on Jesus, when we're focusing on Him as Savior and Lord, mm -hmm. He is pouring in His very life into us. And that's the Holy Spirit that becomes transforming. That, that love between the Father and the Son is the Holy Spirit poured into our lives. And so the very character they have is that spirit at work in us. And we just want to cultivate those fruits, you know. So walking the spirit is cultivating, avoiding those exits that we know, we know are going to uh, disrupt, derail our journey um, and staying tight in that narrow way that leads to life. Well, and, and I think, you know, sometimes we, we don't think about the power 
that, that exists within us, you know, through, through His Spirit in us, is this is the creator of the entire universe, of everything that exists. This is the omniscient, the omnipotent, and He's sharing His nature, His Spirit, His presence with us. And, and, and yet we're saying, no, 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 God, I, I've got this on my agenda, as opposed to going, look, if, we'll if, get back with you later. yeah, <laughs> this, the, I mean, he's inviting us into his agenda. And, and to think, you know, I've, I've had those experiences in my life where you have these serendipitous moments where, where, you know, something that, that just, just out of the blue, just things just magically fell into place. And you're thinking, that didn't just happen. That was not, God. Not, not me at all. <laughs> right. And, and, you know, the first time that may happen to you, you may think, well, that was just a bizarre coincidence and everything just magically worked out like that. And then it happens again and you're thinking, you know, about the third time. But that's the journey of faith is, is if, you're, if you're willing to, to obey, leading you. That, that you get to see those serendipitous moments in your life. And, and you know, to me, you know, they're just too far and infrequent in my life. Right. And, it, it, you know, I just think of it like trying to play a flute and, and, and you're blowing, you're blowing, you're blowing, but you can't get a note out. And then once in a while, you know, you actually get a note and you go, how did I do that? <laughs> you know, and if you can have those serendipitous moments in your life, you know, it's, that's what it means to be led by the Spirit and to be right. with His Spirit. Right. And it's just our human nature gets in the way so often. Right. And we can't have that serendipitous life that he wants for us because we're too much trying to control it and trying to do it ourselves. And I think it's important here too when we talk about this walking in the Spirit, I mean led by the Spirit, is to see all the aspects of what the Spirit does for us. Because this journey is not just joyful, it's not just about our successes. We see the Spirit um, entering in um, and, and leading us in different kinds of ways, in different kinds of needs. So Paul can talk about being transformed from one glory of the Lord to another glory of the Lord by the Holy Spirit to the Corinthians. And how exciting is that, yeah. to be transformed mm -hmm. from glory to glory. But then in another place in Romans, he talks about this deep groaning that's going on in creation and how mm -hmm. the Spirit makes intercession for mm -hmm. us with groanings that can't even be uttered. And so what I want to encourage the class is that you know, as we talk about these big lofty ideas about participating in the, in the divine nature, God meets us where we're at. Sometimes we're just at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we're just at the bottom. We don't even have the words. And the Holy Spirit is there too with groanings that, that can't be uttered. It's, he's interceding for us. Um, and so I want to, to leave us with a note of encouragement that there's a spectrum of experience in this process. And if you find yourself at low ebb, if you find yourself lonely, if you find yourself um, really doubting, don't feel like you're not on, you're not walking by the Spirit because the Spirit in points like that, it carries us. It, 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 it speaks for us, it groans for us. And, and the key is to continue to surrender, to continue to trust through those difficult times and to hold on to your brothers and sisters um, the church as a community is one of the most important things we can cultivate. As we're cultivating fruits of the Spirit, the Spirit's cultivating the body. Every, every time the Spirit is spoken of as a metaphor at work in the church, it, it's some sort of co connection of things, like a building, like a body, um, like a bride. This is what the body of Christ is. And it takes the spirit to hold all those things together and to nourish it and to gift it in different ways. And so we need each other, um, especially when times are difficult, when we're going through hard times. But don't be discouraged because the spirit of God is right there with yeah, you. To help. Groaning with you. <laughs> yes, right, to help. And um, so the word uh, to cultivate and to facilitate kind of came up um, um, in the way you answered the question or, or, or spoke more about this lesson. And so, could you highlight some of the things that we are doing as a conference, um, apart from the quarterlies, um, to help to facilitate that, um, that uh, alignment or walk in the spirit? I'm going to start again. I'll start with you this time, Jason. Okay. okay. So, <laughs> 
I've been with the, the Bob Lavica Press now for two years. I've, I've had a whole career uh, in newspaper uh, and recently retired from that. And Brother Calvin Burrell kind of reeled me in and, <laughs> and I, I realized I needed to change. And, and um, so I, I, about two years ago, a little over two years, two, year, two and a half years, I guess now, um, and I've just been so excited um, to be a part of publications. Jody can speak for um, General Conference as a whole, but I'm excited about what publications is doing in our church, uh, and partly I'm excited about n new new things we're doing like this, which would never have occurred to me as a print man. Uh, we're reaching out in all kinds of ways with these sorts of helps. And I'm, I, I love sitting down with other churches, going through the quarterlies with them, asking them about the tracks. Do you get the Bible Advocate? What can we produce to help? Digitally, physically, physical print. Um, what, are some, what are some areas of need? These are all conversations we're having internally. How can we uh, facilitate greater discipleship? How can we facilitate greater witness in our communities? Um, we're already printing a, a tremendous volume of material uh, and it's going all over the world and we're getting reports back of, of successes in the field where lives are being changed and, and um, it's just, it's an honor, it's humbling to, to be part of that. I think my word to, the, to uh, those listening, to those watching in Sabbath schools is the real work is done right there locally. The real work is right there in your pews and what you're going to do when you walk out the door in your community. So the Bible Advocate Press, um, as one of the three main ministries of General Conference, is really here to help, um, to come alongside you and to give you the kinds of tools that would be helpful. We, we can't do the work. We can give you tools that can help you work better. And in, in order to really make the most of that relationship is for you to to use what we offer, give us feedback on it, tell us, tell us what, we, what we can do better, tell us what we're, we're not doing at all and, and can be helpful. And I'm excited to really collaborate. I'm trying to be the face of the BA and get around to churches and visit. In this trip to um, the Northeast, we've got to meet with three pastors and visit three different churches. And I'm just excited to, to see the church in action in, on the local area. Um, and, and so the Bible Advocate, it says we represent the church, our motto, we represent the church and glorify the God of grace and truth. Mm -hmm. That's what we're trying to do. Um, and really the work of that is it takes fruit in our local congregations that are blessed by it, that are edified by it, and that can take it and spread um, what they learn to others. And then when, uh, when uh, uh, President Stacy and I took our positions, um, you know, we we looked over things and we looked at, you know, basically our, our church structure with with the uh, the superintendents and the and the district boards and board of directors and things. And we saw that we actually have a really good structure for for uh, being able to work as a team. But we it seemed like we weren't using that structure very well. It seemed like you know most of our superintendents were were working in terms of they each had their own agendas and they each had had their, uh, <clears throat> you know, um, essentially working in, in seven different districts, each kind of working in their own districts. Um, we kind of referred to those as silos, that they, were, they weren't working together as one team. And so that was part of our goal was, was to get them to work together as one team. And in order to work together as one team, you need to have a common goal, you need to have a common project. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's kind of where the, uh, the transforming vision into reality came about was, was so that we could have a common, you know, they, each of them have their own roles and their own responsibilities they need to, to deal with in their own districts. But at the same time, we need to have some common project that brings us together as one team. And not only the superintendents as one team, but the area reps as one team, the pastors as one team, the congregations as one team. And so we see the entire church as one team working together on, on basically, if you look at TVR, it's, it's, it's uh, Jesus as Savior, Jesus as Lord, and the Great Commission. To focus on Jesus, to become Christ-centered, and, and, and uh, to focus, follow His plan. And, and by doing that, you know, 
even though we, we, we understand that, that we each have different roles that we play, that the general conference, they, uh, at the general conference level, we help set the vision, we help set the environment, um, but we respect the responsibilities of the districts to do their district ministries, and the districts respect the responsibilities of, of the uh, local churches to do their local ministries. So we, we each know that we're doing different roles and, and we each lead in those roles, but at the same time, we need to also, as good leaders, be willing to be good followers. And, um, and so we feel like that uh, President Stacy and I have done that from the sense that, that we didn't just discard the vision and say, well, let's start a new vision. We say, well, this is a great vision that, that God has blessed our church with. Let's continue to follow this vision. Mm -hmm. But let's see if through the Holy Spirit working through us and through our church, that the Holy Spirit will transform our vision into reality as we all work together as one team. And that's, that's, that's what uh, I think is, 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 is the efforts of the things that we're trying to do beyond just the lessons. The lessons are a part of that. Mm -hmm. and, and that's why we're focusing on the transforming vision into reality. But we're also focused on all of us working together as one team and the feeling like we're one church together, even in our separate roles and doing separate things. Mm -hmm. and, one, one final point with that is to think that that some people, you know, we, we hear of, of well, the, the TVR doesn't really give us a, a detailed plan. And it's, it's, that's, that's by intention. We want to give you the ability to say, you know, just focus on Jesus and follow his plan. We're going to focus on Jesus as Savior and Jesus as Lord, and then we'll, we'll focus on the Great Commission. But how you do that you have the freedom to lead in how you do that and to create your own plans and to do that however you see best fit in your, in your local congregations. And so that gives our leaders the ability to have the creativity to lead the best ways to fit the ministries and the local needs as they see fit because they're the experts in that. It's not a one size fits all plan. It's a, it's a plan that is as diverse as our needs are but yet we're all doing the same thing together, which is saying we want to focus on Christ and we want to do His plan. Mm -hmm. And that's what Transforming Vision into Reality is all about. Um, I, I, I know that was important um, to, uh, to share because it, 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 it may seem easy on the outside, um, not knowing that the work that goes into um, to keep an organization up and running, that I'm um, to get the superintendents to um, to work together. I mean, it, that alone is a, a task by itself, right? And, but all of this is done to enable the journey, right? Um, we, 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 we need everyone to do their part almost. And the quarterlies help, the, um, the, the BAP helps, but the administration itself and how it works together and the people in it uh, being good leaders are, are there to help us with um, the journey to being a person with the spirit inside of us exactly. um, um, is the goal and and I think that is, is, is awesome that we are a team and I thank God for these lessons faith and foundations and and, 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 and that and that's it.